Hello, my name is Soren Schroeder, and it is a pleasure to meet all of you digitally. And I hope that you, your families and businesses are weathering the storm as well as possible. Many things will change as a consequence of the global crisis and holding meetings this way and more people working from home are sure to be some of them. Some sectors of industry and society will perhaps be better understood and more appreciated, for example, the healthcare industry. But I'm also sure that consumers around the world will reflect on the importance and resilience of the global food production system, starting with farming, through the logistics, processing, and distribution. The food and feed supply chains around the world continue to operate efficiently and provide the world with its most important basic need in times of crisis, the assurance of healthy nutrition. Soybeans and its products are the essential building blocks in animal feed and for many food applications, and very dependent on global trade to serve those regions which have a need for both protein and for oils, and therefore the basis for strong domestic crush industries. Roughly half, about 150 million tons of global consumption of soybeans are traded across borders, which speaks to the importance of efficient and reliable logistics and strong and trusting relationships. Those relationships are precious and are often built over many years. They're harder to accomplish by phone or video, and therefore an example where travel and meeting in person still has big value, and I'm sure that people will be very thoughtful about making the most of meeting in person when that's possible again. I've been in the agri-food industry all my career and experienced many business cycles and disruptions along the way, and I've always considered the U.S. origin the most reliable source that could step in with surge capacity when needed. This still holds true. The 60% of global soybean exports coming from other parts of the world, it doesn't take much disruption in those supply chains to result in a call on US capacity. Disruptions can take many forms, poor crops, political instability, financial crisis, logistics issues, labor disputes, or a global crisis as we're experiencing it now. And they seem to happen someplace in the world every year. At peak times, the U.S. has exported as many as 3 million tons of soybeans per week with capacity running on all coasts and with highly efficient multimodal interior logistics systems which ensure continuous supply. The ability to serve exports from all coasts, including the Great Lakes, makes the U.S. export infrastructure very flexible and a unique combination of barge and highly efficient rail transportation results in less dependency on trucking as compared to other origins. Both interior and export terminals are highly automated, making them more resilient. In short, the U.S. supply chain can be relied upon like no other. At the same time, innovation in agribusiness and food is accelerating at a very high pace, especially in the United States, and focused on the future trends which really matter. The link between food and health on one side and food and sustainable practices on the other, essentially making more and better products with less. New companies are born every day and are receiving funding like never before. For example, seeds with important output traits for both proteins and oils, microbial products, which enhance soil health and which help sequester carbon, changing farming practices with the aid of big data and remote sensing, new quality management systems and affordable traceability tools, and paperless execution both domestically and internationally, and much more. The U.S. is really the hub for innovation to the benefit of its global customers, and there's a lot to learn. Farmers quickly adopt new technology, and it is relatively straightforward and transparent to build specialty supply chains, be it crops with unique output traits, or organic products or non-GMO, as long as one can put together critical mass to ensure cost competitiveness, which is typically the role of your export partners. So while price is important and move in seasonal patterns as we know, my experience tells me that it's good practice to keep a strong connection to U.S. agriculture and to the export sector, to build and nurture relationships with your trading partners, to study new technology and products, and to allocate supply chain requirements appropriately, taking all those factors into account. The future of agriculture and food holds so much promise, and I'm convinced that the U.S. will continue to play a leading role in this. And with that, I wish you good health and good fortune.